Hello, friends. Hi. Hey. Well, here we are to make a derailer show. And I suppose I want to start by asking how you're doing. Very good. Yeah. Um, I can only speak for myself. What, what's, what's good, Janet? I don't know. It's summertime in Oregon. I'm with my friends. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I like everything about today so far. That's mm -hmm. what I can say. Yeah. Um, I agree. I'm having a great day. I, I love small talk. Yeah. I love when small talk fires on all cylinders. And I've been I've been having some fantastic small talk here in Portland, Oregon. What do you consider small talk? Yeah, what's firing on all cylinders? <laughs> like, what are you working on? Oh, cool. Virtual reality? When I was a kid, that was a joke. I met a person who's really working on virtual reality. Mm. And it's not a They're joke. They're really working on virtual reality? Yeah. Oh. Like, okay. they spend their days creating virtual worlds. It's funny, because, like, I would consider that either actual conversation or schmoozy business networking, but I consider small talk stuff like the weather, like, how are you doing today? Where are you from? Where are you from? Yeah. How about these sports teams? What's, What's your dog's name? This is a long uh, line at the grocery store, huh? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's that's which is very different than like so any interesting projects coming down the pipeline. <laughs> Funny, yeah, I see your point. I think <laughs> I think what we've just learned is that I don't know. I'm just like still figuring out how to be a human being. <laughs> that's a pretty big jump. We, everybody, everybody, <laughs> is everybody is there. Everybody yeah, that's how I feel does about it. Job. Yeah. Um, Dylan, Dylan, tell me about a time that you've uh, walked to the line between uh, how's the weather and what what project are you working on. Well, I mean, I think that's basically any time you're with a client, it's all that. It's like any time you are doing a job or working where you have a business relationship with this person that you're also spending social time with, then it always kind of lives in that realm of like, uh, like having to be positive and uh, like fun, but also professional. And so I think that lives in that weird line between like how's the weather and what interesting projects come down the line. But now there's this umbrella of it has to be all for making this person's experience positive. You can't actually give real answers. They have uh, to be totally can... manufactured to create this illusion of servicing the client. Everything you just said was extremely abstract. Can you... <laughs> Can you be specific? Can you tell no, me this time? No, because that... I don't know who watches this. <laughs> what about like 15 years ago? Is there a, like a time that, like when you first were like learning to uh, navigate that world? I mean, I guess working at a bar, I mean, you do that all the time with like people who you're serving. So I worked at a big, like a very fast paced Chicago Cubs bar that was also a tiki bar that was also a karaoke bar. And okay. Yeah, yeah, cares, man. It's, it's real. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you would just have those conversations where it's like, oh, what are you guys doing today? Oh, we're going to the Cubs game. Oh, great season, huh? For, oh, and then, you know, how do you think Alfonso Soriano is uh, going to fare this year after that injury? And so you have, like, He's these... A person. Yeah, that's a person. <laughs> it's like a very, like, kind of, like, real-ish real, real -ish conversation, but it's still in service of them enjoying their shitty win yeah i need to have a specific but i want to ask kara first why it's gross uh the bar isn't that what you just said yeah, it's, it's gross. gross it's like uh probably about a five minute walk from wrigley field and that area is full of drunk frat boys and in the more i used to live in that area and in the morning it would be like landmines of vomit oh. yeah and just everybody's going there from the birds to have a night on the town and we also get some uh, off-Broadway stars who come in who just want to sing. It was like, I, I have a place in my heart for this place. That the, the, I worked there for a long time, but it's not not what Kara is saying. I just Thank see you it. Thank for your validation. Yeah, I just see it with a little more, like, dream shine than just the vomit pools. Because, like, there were people I care about there. 
and it was like during formative years and uh, I learned, I feel like even though it wasn't the best job, it was like a job that I learned a lot about people and I learned a lot about how to work a job. So I gotta, I gotta hear one specific anecdote then from those days. All right. And you just said that you had a, you have a dream shine. You think about it with a bit of a sparkle in your eye, but also clearly there was vomit. Kara well, can't be wrong. Well, I got the job because I beat the manager at Guitar Hero, and he was going through different applications, and he decided he'd rather work with someone who could beat him at Guitar Hero than someone who couldn't. And the bar was not, like the rumor is that it's owned by Ogre from Revenge of the Nerds, but that's not actually accurate. The actor, Don Gibb, who plays Ogre in Revenge of the Nerds, was a good friend of the owner who helped uh, go in on a line of beer with the owner. So Ogre Light Beer which was served exclusively at this bar, was half owned by Ogre from Revenge of the Nerds. Was Ogre different than Booger? Yes. Okay. Booger is, was a nerd. <laughs> Ogre, no, go ahead. No, no, I want to hear your... Bo uh, Booger is a nerd that picks his nose. He lives in California. And Ogre is a, fr <laughs> and Ogre is a, a frat boy who just... Um, like really was he's he played the, by Andre the Giant or something? No, but he looked like that's the guy. Okay. You know who I'm I talking, know who about. You're talking about. And so he yeah. was like the original nerds guy. Yeah, okay. But then in Revenge of the Nerds 2, Nerds in Paradise, he becomes a nerd. I forgot about Nerds in Paradise. <laughs> I like that we all watch this movie. <laughs> and it was like, if you think back on just how horrific, like if that was made today, oh, it would God. be like. I rewatched it recently. It up pretty. Bad. Oh, yeah. it's so sexist and, ho and homophobic, homophobic and, and horrible. Racist. Yeah, Straight. everything about it is yeah. 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 Yes, Straight. the entire climax of the film is an assault. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's an assault. Yeah. And that was a trope also in those movies of that time where boys would like carve holes in rooms where they were going to bathe and then they would like set up cameras or like yeah. camera holes and this like peeping Tom thing was like a it's big like deal. Every 80s movie yes. is just some dude being like, gross. <laughs> 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 or, like Porky's, they're even just cutting holes to stick their dick through. Them. Like yeah, Porky's was like so far <laughs> beyond uh, Revenge of the Nerds. We got Porky's out from the video store. I remember it was a big deal. It was like, my first R-rated movie, and my mom was like, "Fine," and my dad was like, "Let's do it." And we got Porky's home, and we got through about the first five minutes. What did your parents? I was like nine, and my mom was like, absolutely not, and she shut it off, and we went back to the video store, and we got short circuit. Yeah. <laughs> also, a terrible movie. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, there's got some stuff in there. <laughs> the Fisher Stevens has some things to say about. Uh, he had best intentions, <laughs> but. Oh my God. There, in my town where I grew up, uh, there was a, a theater where if it was an R-rated movie and you were not over 18 years old, like you were not allowed to go see it. The old man at the front would not let oh, you wow. in, even if there was a parent there. And I remember my friend and I wanted to go see About Last Night with Rob Lowe and Demi Moore. Ooh, and sexy. he said it was entirely inappropriate and would not let us go. And so we were like, well, we'll show him. And we rented it on video or whatever when it came out. And they had like sex in the bathtub. And we're like, shut it off! <laughs> shut it off! We couldn't, we couldn't handle it. I accidentally watched uh, Train Spotting with my mom <laughs> when I was 14, I think, maybe. And the sex scene came on, and we both frantically were searching for the remote to turn it the fuck off. And But then we just sat there silently while it finished, and he ripped the cop off. <laughs> oh are, my god. Are these the worst movies then that you've seen with your parents? Was that the worst movie? Yeah, probably. I've never seen like a m movie with my parents. My dad, I think the only movie, I, the only two movies I ever remember him ever seeing were Chariots of Fire, mm -hmm. and he took my ten-year-old sister to go see Grease. Which, when yeah. I think about that, yeah, uh, and all the sexual innuendo and stuff in there, and like her being like, everything's singing and awesome, and yeah. like him being like, what the hell? Uh, that always like rattles me. But my mom actually came over to my house to watch. Seinfeld when I had a boyfriend over and 
uh, or my apartment in college. And it was this. It was the one where they had the masturbation uh, contest. Yeah, yeah. So that was incredibly uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. That was very uncomfortable. Uh, a little, a lighter, a hilarious thing my dad used to do when we were kids is when people would kiss in a movie. He would go, "Oh, oh." Uh, <laughs> 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 my, I, my mom didn't always watch the movies with us, but she was notorious for like she liked fines at the video store like she she wanted to be someone who introduced us to interesting movies so she'd read the back and then be like oh this is a fine this movie's gonna be great and she had never seen the movies but she's like this is a weird enough film that I'm gonna show my kids that this is like an exciting thing um and so sometimes she sometimes it would be a home run like sometimes it was just a weird movie that was really interesting and sometimes it would be this movies like the one that will forever stand out. It's like me and my sister are probably tw 12 and 10 and the movie was called Oliver Olivier or I Oliver Oliver or something like this and it's essentially a French movie about a brother or, or like this girl whose family adopts this boy who is her brother or maybe not and they start sleeping together. Of course. And it's like this total weird like, a like fl French flowers in the end. Yeah, yeah. It's like this weird kind of like very, like not even pseudo incest. Like it's just like the clear central through line of this film are are these two teenagers siblings and are and like they're having a relationship and I'm just like what did you want out of this experience for me and my sister to take away from this movie? And like, why, like, did you not, like, it must have been on the back of the box. So that's the central, <laughs> the central theme of the movie. <laughs> so I'm like, did you just want to show that you're like a hip parent? Who's like, da like, she's like, I get it. <laughs> like, like, I don't know. Let's watch this weird French movie. Yeah, yeah. And maybe I, it was in French and she didn't know. It was in French, but she'd never seen it anyway. But maybe oh, the, the back of the box was uh, in French. I don't know. She speaks Spanish. She'd probably get a decent amount. Like, I don't know how to say some of these words in either language, but I assume that they're similar to English incest. Uh, <laughs> so, like, I think you could take away from it. Uh, but oh, incest with an, extra, with, an extra, <laughs> with an extra E on the end. Yeah. Incest. Uh, but... It, yeah, it was just, it was very, very funny. Right. Uh, yeah. you should stop watching it. Oh, I can't look away. Oh. How long have you been here? About, uh, about five minutes. Huh. Oh. Yeah, it is kind of terrible and fascinating at the same time. It's just two people consensually hugging each other. Yeah, they don't stop. They won't stop doing it. Mm -mm. Huh. It's like a game now. Yeah. It's animal planet for you. <laughs> we are like monkeys, you know? Yeah. Oh, I knew that the whole time. Like, anybody that ever is going to dispute that, I'm just like, look at the evidence. I am right. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's so obvious. Like, we all hump, if I can use that term. Yeah. Thank uh, you. You are um, my kid. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've all grown up now, so I, I just figured, hump. like, we're on that plane where I can just, like, hump. chat with you about stuff. Hump. Um. Like we hump mm -hmm. and we like take care of our young. Yeah. And like we look for food and we find shelter and you know, we care about each other and then we all die. Like and I mean, monkeys have fingers and toes for God's sakes. Yep. They're still hugging. I never um did you wanna hug me? I just felt like it was the right moment. Okay. You're pumping. That is nice. Yeah. After a few seconds, I have to, I feel like I should let go, but I kind of, it's like a challenge. Yeah, sink into it. <laughs> I've got a butt out. <laughs> They've just been hugging in their kitchen for about 30 minutes. Oh, honey, what do you think that's all about? I don't know. They were hugging in front of the television, and they went in, got a sandwich, and they kept hugging in there. I like how they're smiling. That is a nice, it is a nice smile. 
you look so happy. You do look happy. I do look happy. I wonder if it was a, a special event. Do you think that maybe, do you think they, there was a job? I, look, a job? Did they get a job? Like, why are they so happy? Well. Why, what would make a person hug like that, is what I'm asking. Maybe, maybe they experienced a loss. Maybe there, there's an element of comfort in that hug. Oh, well, look, they're, they're kind of grooming each other a yeah. little bit, too. Yeah, I just would expect that in a loss, you know, situation. Thanks, Mom. I was, I was too embarrassed to ask my roommate. <laughs> well, I figure that you came out of me and I gotta take care of that, right? Thanks. Do you want any? No. No, thanks. Thirty eight. God, I just this reminds me of when I was a kid. When I was really little. Mm -hmm. We've been doing this for a long time. Yep. <laughs> Did your mom do this for you? Oh yeah. What was what was uh, me more like? Me more? Yeah. <laughs> me 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 mama more? Yeah. Oh. When you were little, I mean. Yeah. Oh, I had scabies, and she used to eat the scabs. Really? Mhm. Mm That's love right there. I know. They're tastier than lice. I'll say that. She seems like so conservative now. I just thought, like, I wonder what she was like when she was younger. If she was like more carefree and she was a bit of a pistol. <laughs> really? Mm-hmm. Are you dating anyone? I'm dating a few people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's weird. I a few people? Yeah. It's no one wants to have a committed relationship, so I just figured you might as well join them. So. I know that's right. Yeah. Are you finished? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You do? Do you? Or what's going on with you? Oh, you know, single woman again. So mm -hmm. getting back out there. Met a guy at church. Aw, that's got to be a good place. Maybe I should go back to church. It's full of single widowed men. Widowers? Is that how you say that? Oh, that'd be too old for me. <laughs> I I am full. Do you want any? I'm. Sh you should have some. Do you have a uh, plate or something? No, I just lean forward on the coffee table oh, and shake okay. them out. Oh, there you go. Oh, wow. That's All a bunch right. of them. Yeah. Those are good. The babies are the tenderest. Mm. <laughs> God, I never do this. Why don't I ever do this? Get your own head lice? Yeah. I, mean, I don't know. Yeah. I should save some, though, for later. I yeah. I'll put them in a well, Ziploc. They tend to crawl. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Um. Ugh. <laughs> <Gross>. <laughs> you can't smash them. Yeah. Okay, look, I just, I just want to keep our sort of intimate relationship on the down low at work, okay? Okay. Can we just keep it? Yeah, I mean, if that's what you want, I, I would, I'd rather that than not have this, but it does hurt my feelings a little bit. Well, we can, no, no, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but huh. I just don't want to... I just don't want everyone to get the wrong idea. No, oh, I get it. I work in the mailroom. That's a pretty, pretty like you're you're punching down with this one, and I get I get that. So if that's what needs to happen for us to continue to have sex in the janitor's closet, then I'd I'd like to keep this a secret. Okay, great. Because I definitely want to keep having sex in the janitor's closet. Okay, I think we're on the same page there. Okay. Um, but like I I can't do this forever. Like eventually. I'm, I'm gonna want people to know. Hey Paige, hey Neil. Hey, Sandy. Hey. Hey. Yeah, How's it going? Have you um, taken a look at the deck for this afternoon yet? No. I mean, oh, okay. Um, well, Neil and I were just talking about some male, this male snafu that happened oh. earlier. <laughs> yeah, it was a real, it was a real hairy ordeal. Oh, I... There's a, a, uh, envelope. Oh, oh, thank you. Yeah. I, um, I'll look at it later. Um, I just figured you guys were talking about your relationship that everyone knows about that you try to keep secret. It's cute, but oh, I don't know. I don't think that's yeah. it's silly. It's, it's you guys silly. want any of these bagels? Yeah. Oh. No. Hey. Okay. <laughs> See, everybody knows. How? That was. That did, was that was Terry. How did you? How She's did you the know? vice president of marketing. Yeah. Whoa. How do we know? <laughs> There's thin walls in here. 
And there's also a security camera in the janitor's closet. No, I, I. Are you been serious? Yeah, we've been watching. Wait, what? Yeah, we've. There's a security camera in the janitor's closet. There's a security camera in the janitor's closet. Why? I feel like we've said because people steal products and like huff them and stuff, so they put it in there. So you guys have just been watching us have oh sex for the last three months with snacks. It's like our best time of the day. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's like the highlight uh, anytime it happens. We stop every all work when it happens. Hey, I'm a little mortified here. I uh, am really embarrassed. You shouldn't be. You no. guys are really good together. Like, mm. kind of the best I've seen. <laughs> How many people are having sex in this janitor's closet? No, 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 no. I, I mean, like, the best I've seen, like, internet wide. Oh. Yeah. Okay. No, nope. well, that's You're the only ones having. You're the only ones that didn't know. Apparently, there was a camera in there, so no one is doing it now. Except you. Well, I mean, and we would like it to continue. Oh my, well, that's creepy. <laughs> well, if you want to keep your jobs. Whoa. I, I, I uh, take it back. I, we, we obviously have to keep doing this. It sounds like yeah. our jobs are dependent on us pleasing the ones watching the cameras. I, maybe we should find more cameras and see if there are more places that... Why are they so far apart? <laughs> I just... Do it, watching do it, them. It, we're not, do we're not it, just animals. Do it, do it, we're not just gonna it, bang for you. Do it, do it. Oh boy, guys. Um, boy, that, I'm. Uh, I, I'm, I'm. This is Eric Klein talking now, for at the the host of Derailer, and uh, I once was a uh, a young man. I was a boy, and. Uh, I lived in an apartment complex. Well, actually what I lived in was I lived across from a very large apartment complex with a large number of windows, which um, after puberty uh, held a lot more fascination for me. And the th I didn't like see a lot or spend a lot of time looking at those windows. It wasn't like a... Um, it wasn't anything that like I'm like need to worry like that I'd be worried about if like my child was doing something. But like yeah, like I would see people, I would see couples doing things, and even like just couples like talking in the bedroom was something that fascinated me. Uh, like just just being, just living together. Uh, <laughs> and it's I. It's a funny thing. Uh, I had not really lived with a loving couple until I was like 27. Yeah. And then I moved in with my friends Seth and Victor and I was like, this is weird to be in a home with two people that very much love each other. <laughs> and I felt like their child. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. Yeah, and it, that just occurred to me just now as I was speaking out loud, was that obviously as a child whose parents screamed at one another yeah, when they were together and then were no longer together when I was six years old. Uh, that's, a, yeah, I'm just watching couples. Uh, Be kind to one another. Yeah, although I also like saw some stuff. Sure, yeah. And uh, you can't unsee that. Yeah. Oh, I, I saw it on purpose, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I, I have no desire to unsee it at all. Well, it's, it's, when I was growing up, I lived uh, in a house and across the street from the house was like a row of townhouses and there was a man that lived on the one on, all the way on the end and he would come out from his house and sit on the front stoop and smoke and he would just he'd basically just be looking in our house like he would just every night be smoking and just looking directly at our house and i had a bedroom that like uh, like most of our bedrooms were at the front of the house and for some reason my window had like some very gauzy girly curtains on like they were pinned back but there was no shade of any kind and so if I ever was like getting ready for bed as a kid and he was out there I'd like be under the <laughs> I'd be under the window so like put my <laughs> <laughs> or like against the wall like getting ready for bed and it wasn't like he was creepy he was a nice person like mm -hmm. you know we talked to him and he had kids our age and uh but it, it just always felt like a weird thing that he was just always just like looking directly into our home and I'd generally was made I, to feel embarrassed about our family at all times, so. I had a sort of similar experience from the other 
outside when we lived in a house in California where my bedroom window, the only thing it looked out on was our next door neighbor's backyard and they had a pool and everything. Like, there was literally nothing else outside my window except our neighbor's yard. And so sometimes I would look out there, but I always felt kind of creepy because it was like their private space. And then I went back to that house years later and checked it out and they had grown this giant like wisteria vine around. Um, <laughs> so now when you looked out that window, you couldn't see anything yeah. except foliage. And I wondered if they had done that because of me. We, we had a, older neighbor across the street from my childhood home who lived there the entirety of the time I grew up in Minnesota and he was a super crotchety old dude like one of these guys that would like call our house to tell us that like because like we our dog would go out and use the bathroom <laughs> go to the, like go do its business and then come back to the house without a leash like we just opened the door and the dog knew like where to go and what to do panda and come back but sometimes panda would just go for a walk and he would call us and be like your dog's at the corner of north tyrell and well and i was the first of all i was like how do you know where this dog is like you're calling from a landline so i don't understand how he always knew but he would like give us reports as to like or like he'd call to say you know your grass is too overgrown or these like and then as he got a little older and crazier, he like, I remember picking up the phone and be like, it's 130 degrees outside, so stay inside your house. <laughs> it's like, don't leave, because it's too hot. Um, Was it ever 130 no, degrees No, no, he just started to lose it, I think. Oh, but oh. he had a black poodle that would die every five years and he'd replace it with a black poodle. Oh. And it would be the same, like, and I, so I knew three generations of the same black poodle. Yeah. That only lived till the age of five? Every five, every five years mm -hmm. the dog would die and then he'd buy a new black poodle. Our neighbor used to open the gate specifically for his dog to shit in our backyard. Oh. Yeah. Thank you for it's that. a giant German Shepherd and he would just come back there and let him go. We had a neighbor that named his dogs Bill and Hillary. <laughs> this was in the 90s so that we would constantly be treated to the sound of him saying, Pee Billery! <laughs> Mom, can you just say that again? Can you say, I love, I love dad? I love dad. Oh. Thanks. But what are you using that for, babe? I'm just kind of making a mixtape of your guys love for when it's sad. Oh. Mm hmm When is it sad? I mean, sad? most of the time when you guys yell and like, I just want to, I want to capture it on tape so I can always have this like cool thing to listen to of like the greatest hits of your love. Wow. Um, it makes me sad that we're making you sad. I'm so sorry. Oh, it's okay. I get it. Not everyone's made for everybody. Oh, no. We love each other. We're staying together. Oh, sorry. Can you say that again? We we love each other. We're staying together. That's a good one. I just um. That's gonna sound really good, like in ten years when you guys are living in different places. Yeah. And like I know that you what? Well, I mean, I see where this is heading, and I just want to remember all the good stuff. So you're eight like, years old. What do you mean you see where this is heading? I mean, the writing's on the wall, mom. Is it? I don't know. Do you know something that I don't know? No, I mean. All I know is that I see you guys fight, and I see how John's parents fight, I don't know, you know, well, that dad's going to have a tiny apartment, uh, but I'm going to eat a lot of da, pizza. Da, 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 okay. Fighting is good. We're, it's okay to fight and get all those feelings out. Be careful the ones that don't fight. They're hmm. bottling it all up inside, and there's lies inside. Okay, well, yeah. John McGregor beats me up, and so... That means that he is getting it out. Does that make him a better partner for his future wife? John McGregor is beating you up? Yeah, he beats me up like two times a week. Why is this the first time I'm hearing about this? Are you okay? I'm fine. I'm this like, is hey. never going to, after today, this is never going to happen again. Well, do I, what am I supposed to do? You just you, told me that I, I should, you know, if I don't, if I should attack. Are you guys fighting? Yeah. We're just we're just having a discussion. Are you okay? Of course. Just making a recording. <sighs> Why are you recording this? What are you using that for? Just want to bring it up when you guys are talking about how much you love each other and there's no problems in this family. I got proof. 
Okay, okay Richard. <laughs> I see where you got that from now. I yeah. I, I did not realize I was under constant surveillance of this family. We just want to remember <laughs> that things we want to remember. Okay, that's good. But John McGregor's been beating me up, and now I'm really confused John about McGregor's what I should do. John McGregor's been beating him up. What? Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you tell us about it? That's what I asked. And again, I don't want to blame the victim. No, that's a good idea. But I'm just saying. You guys are fighting. Kiddo, again. kiddo, kiddo, kiddo. What? We're going to put a stop to this. You don't have to do anything. We will we will talk to his parents, and this is Oh, it's just going to make it worse. Oh, I don't think so. Hey. You got something to say to me? Got yeah. something to say to my mom and my dad? Yeah, I do. What? Your parents shouldn't hold it all inside because those are the people you're supposed to watch out for. And I, my, my parents are probably going to call your parents about you. Ah! That's my knuckle sandwich. That one hurt. Whoa. I turned away though, so I'm not sure if you hit me. Whoa. <laughs> kind of glanced off. Whoa. Well. Uh, my mom said that I shouldn't keep it all inside, so I'm probably gonna attack you. Well, fine, do it. John do McGregor, it. I hate this. I hate it. Ah, ah, I hate ah, this, John McGregor. Ah, oh my god. Finally, I feel something. Oh. Well, can you say that again? I just want to. Finally, I feel something. Is that one yours? Mm-hmm. Such a cutie pie. Thanks. What kind of dog is he? He's a boxer. Oh, He's a boxer terrier. Yeah, I knew that guy. I saw that he was a boxer, but I couldn't figure out what the mix was. Yeah, they call it a barrier. It's <laughs> cute. That is cute. Oh. Which one's yours? That uh, that little one over there. Oh, little Frenchie. Oh, Frenchie. Frenchie. I know, I just want to eat him sometimes. I want to eat him too. Yeah. God, I just love dogs so much. I know too. They are like, I mean, just being out here with all of them like this and watching them play and interact and learn. Yep. Like they're all just learning so much right now. Yep. And I learned a lot about the owners just by being here. Do you ever just watch the owners? I love it. Yeah. I made so many friends. Oh, like for example, I just want to, for the record, <laughs> um, I noticed that you like um, the color periwinkle <laughs> and um, that you like, uh, you like uh, smart water. I do yeah. like smart yeah. water. Yeah. Very observant. And you're a and you're a you're a dusk walker. Yeah. Well, yeah. So you must get off work like a little bit later than other people. You're just kind of a dusk walker. I do. That's so funny. Yeah. I actually just switched my schedule and I work ten to six. Okay. Instead of the average nine to five. That makes sense. That makes sense. That's why I see wow. you here. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Um, do you do you know anything like? about what might happen to me in the future, or? Well, based on the behaviors that I've seen from some of the other dog owners, um, I think that you're gonna move in a couple of years. Wow, yeah. you're incredible. Yeah, yeah, and you're gonna, um, it's not like a flyaway place. You're gonna get pack up the car, your, your barrier is gonna get in there with you, and, uh, cause he's gonna be fine, <laughs> and you're gonna, you're gonna go to like, I don't know, Idaho, Wyoming? I have a family member! <laughs> oh, oh. Man, got away from me. <laughs> oh, hey Peggy. Hi. You guys know each other? This woman's incredible. Just be careful. Which, which one did she tell you was hers? Uh, the little, the little Frenchie. All right, well. have fun. <laughs> don't like him, he's crazy. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> what do you know about that guy? <laughs> um, he's a sociopath, actually. Yeah. He, um, what does that mean exactly? It means that he just doesn't care about just the general welfare of other people. He is completely out for himself. And it's like the fact that he has a dog actually concerns me. Well, which one is his? I would like to keep my dog away from his dog. No, 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 no. Don't punish the doggy. Don't punish the doggy. I just mean I worry about the dog, not that the dog's bad. You worry about what he'll do to the dog. Well, just... <sighs> Peggy. Peggy. Yeah? Peggy, my name's Marsha. I know. Would you like a smart water? Yeah, thank you. I have an extra. That's so sweet. Mm. So, um, you are going to get a promotion, by the way. That's why you're moving. Just... <laughs>
I hadn't even submitted my proposal yet. Well, you don't even have to. What? No, they're, they're literally, for the first time in history, corporate America is just going to recognize your hard work and give you a promotion. Jeez. Oh, what? None of it came true, Peggy. Okay? Well, what did you do to jinx it? I didn't do anything. You just set me up for a really big fall, okay? You sure are angry about it, Bill. Yeah, I am angry about it, all right? All right, I I want to get in the middle of this. I mean, I, I just heard some really great news. <laughs> yeah, well, I heard some really great news, too, about four months ago. And what happened? It didn't happen, Peggy. Why do you think that is, Bill? I don't think there's a consequence for my actions. I think that you told me the future, and then the future wasn't correct, and so I'm upset, and I'm sorry if I don't want my dog to play with your dog. Well, frankly, Bill, I felt like you didn't deserve it, so I changed some things around. What? You're a very angry and mean person, and I didn't think you deserved that really nice trip that you were going to win. Oh my god. What? Where's... Carmichael, come here! Oh my god, he's limping. I didn't... What did you do to Carmichael? I didn't do anything! What did you do to Carmichael? I just literally ran the ball went this way! I'm just standing right here. Why are you yelling at me instead of going to your dog? Carmichael! Carmichael! Why won't you go to him? Carmichael! Go to him! I want to see if it's broken! Oh he can't move God. if it's do broken! See, do you see what I'm talking about? Bill, go to Carmichael. Carmichael. No, nope, he's dragging. Sarah's got him. Sarah's already got him. Sarah, take him to the vet! No! Okay. Carmichael! <laughs> oh boy, friends. <laughs> that reminded me of... I... Oh my gosh. My favorite thing was the recording your family to try to change them. Oh, that meant that meant something to me more than I care to admit, really. <laughs> it makes sense, Eric, based on what you're doing today. It does. Um, it really, really does. <laughs> Are you going to elaborate? Uh, first I'm gonna feel, and then I'm gonna uh. elaborate. Yeah, I'm feeling all the feelings. Um, well, one thing it, I uh, thought of was this project that I worked on two years ago that um, started off as a lark, but then late, late at night while I was busily editing it, I realized that it, um, it was no joke, that it was deeply, deeply serious. I was working on, a, I entered a radio race and I started it off with my son in the morning. We were given a topic for the, for the it was a, like a 48 hour make a media thing. And uh, <laughs> yes, like radio, radio race. race. And the, the radio race. And the topic was time. The, the the prompt, which was vague intentionally, was time change. And my son chose the direction for the project, which was like if you could go back in time and ask yourself. If they could go yourself, back in time, uh, or give yourself what would advice, they tell their past self? What would you What would you say, and would you do that? And then I proceeded to call everybody that I could which included all my friends and family and asked them that question and then late at night when I had all that pile of material in my headphones and it was like one in the morning and I was all by myself it no longer felt like a frivolous project at all it felt like like ludicrously important like I really like I had the power to change the future because I had everyone's uh voices recorded answering that question about could you change the future or not and um i think you can oh you know what else that reminds me of uh cameron crow the filmmaker and writer made the movie linda almost hamilton's famous ex-husband? about what's that linda hamilton's ex-husband <laughs> i don't know no no that's uh, Isn't that Cameron Crowe? No, that's Jason Cameron. Or James Cameron. James, James Cameron. Cameron. <laughs> Cameron Crowe. That's Kurt Cameron. Oh. Uh, Cameron Crowe made said. the movie Almost Famous. Yes. And in the movie, the movie Almost Famous is just totally about his childhood and his family. But the one thing that he totally fabricated was that his mom and his sister, like, 
stopped fighting in the 70s and made up. And in real life, in the year 2000, they hadn't made up yet until after he made the film. So we all have to make a film to fix our families. Basically. Okay. Oh my god, I gotta fix my parents' marriage! <laughs> yeah. Francis McDermott. Soup today is a little uh, salty. Oh, well, it's just a can from Campbell's. It's the same I make every Tuesday. Yeah. We've been eating this for 30 years. We are sisters. We don't need other people. We don't. We sure don't need uh, Gladys. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. <laughs> oh, God, I hate that bitch. Neighbors are for the weak. Yes. I'd ask you what you're doing today, but you know. I do. Can I cool off your soup with my fan hat? Oh, absolutely. That's what I bought you it for. Isn't it terrible that you buy a present for someone but it's really for yourself? No. But I knew you wanted it. That works like a charm. I know. Oh, sorry, I'm blowing it right in your ass. <laughs> it's okay, I, I, I'm hot today. Yeah. Because of the soups inside me. And it's summertime. You who? Oh, jeez. You who, ladies? Just stay still. You who don't mind if I come on in, do you? How do we play dead? Well, howdy. Having your Tuesday soup, I see. Francis? McDermott? Francis? McDermott? All right, ladies. Uh, why was there a report of two murders? Uh, Every time she comes into my house, I have to shove my face in the soup. Make her think she's, and then I'm dead. Who, so who is she? We just, we, we had a report of two dead bodies potentially murdered in this apartment, and you're both very much alive. It's... Her name is Gladys. She's a neighbor of ours, a nosy neighbor who lets herself in uninvited. Gladys murdered someone? What? No, no one is dead. We just want her to think we're dead so she'll stop coming over. Can you hand me a paper towel? From your wreck? Yes. Don't, yeah, paper Did towel, not a tea towel. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right, Th you understand this is wasting everybody's time and money. Well, we didn't saying. make the call, officer. I don't remember inviting you in. The door was open. I was looking for two dead bodies, so I came inside. Tomorrow we're buying a deadbolt. I'm off fine. the internet, though. I don't want to go outside. No, no absolutely not. I've got, I've got uh, Amazon Prime. Oh, we'll prime it. Yep. All right, I am going to have to follow up with the person who filed the complaint to say there are no dead bodies. Can you tell her there were two dead bodies in here, please? This would really, we it would appreciate would help that. Help us out. You are strong. Ma'am. Hmm. Thank you. She loves to touch the merchandise. <laughs> Well, thank you for having me down to your station. It's a nice spot. Would you like a cup of soup? Uh, you know, I don't need a cup of soup. Uh, I, I don't just... know if you knew, but when it's hot outside, it's a good time to eat a hot soup. Miss Gladys, is every, everything going okay? I just, I, I just wanted no. to check in with you. My neighbors were murdered okay. in front of my own face. That's why I wanted to, to bring you down here. Um, just, are there I, any other people in your building that you're friendly with? Well, I'm friends with everyone. On Tuesdays, I check in with my neighbors Francis and McDermott. 
Okay, well let's... On Wednesdays, I check in with Lily and Jeff. Maybe just Lily and Jeff. Maybe that's a good place to focus. Um, does this make sense? Have you ever walked in on two murdered bodies? Yes. It happens every once in a while. It's not something I look forward to, but I definitely uh, have walked in on two... I've walked in on three dead bodies. Well, how do you handle it? I mean, it's uh, procedural. I mark the code. Uh, I have to make sure to get down the emergency and the fire department gets called any time that there's an actual. I just want to thank you for getting rid of her. Here's two dollars and a birthday card. Yeah, I don't need your money. I don't Come need your on, money. You did, us a, you did us a solid. Okay, I just, I feel awful about this whole situation. I don't like lying to anybody. She, she got in here and she asked you a lot of questions, didn't she? Yeah. Now, I got on a bus. It was the 42, and I haven't been on a bus in years. I haven't left my home in years. You've done me a solid. Please continue to make that woman think my sister and I are dead. Okay. I, I can't put any more time in this. I've already kind of sidestepped uh, true... Francis! Oh, thank heaven. Oh, I came out of the bathroom and you were gone. Oh. I rode the 36 for an hour. And what? You shouldn't have taken the 42. Why, well, half the time. I eventually got on the 42 because I couldn't find you anywhere. What in the world? Oh, there's our fine young man. Yeah, Hello. That's another $2. I don't yes. need... Just take it. You take They're rare. Them. They are rare. They're not rare. You put it in the safety deposit box. You, you don't know how much those are going to be They're worth. They're going to be worth a lot oh, of money. I have a sneaking suspicion here, Mom. It, well, no, I, you know, uh... We've been around a lot longer than you have, so... Time. Is there anything else I can uh, help you ladies with? An enormous amount of things, actually. Yes. Oh. yes. We've got a lot of heavy lifting. We'd like to move some furniture in our okay, apartment. I'm not a hired... Uh, are you Are you a community servant or not? I... Yeah, I am here to... Young work with man! Oh, jeez. Oh, Young God. man, I need... I need... <laughs> oh, no. Your help with the... My God! Look, I told you! I told you! Yeah, ladies, we gotta, Honey. we gotta, uh, end this ruse, alright? These, these are my friends! <laughs> How could you do this to them? Ladies, it's, uh, the gig is up, alright? Can we just be normal human beings? They're not dead, okay? Well, look at them! They're obviously murdered! Gladys, Gladys, Francis. Miss, Miss Gladys! McDermott! Francis! McDermott! Okay. They're playing dead because they don't want to spend time with you. What? I'm sorry, but that's the truth, and I feel awful saying it. Just take take these two two dollar bills and go get a manicure or do whatever, get your hair done. These but, are quite rare. They're not rare. I don't like burying them any more than you. God. They had a lot of promise. I just, I don't think we should buy Jill any more guinea pigs. Because the lawn is starting to look like a golf course. You know what it looks like? There's these bunkers in Las Vegas. Not Las Vegas, but like outside in Nevada. And it's just like these big lumps, of like kind of like hangers that are piled over with dirt. I don't have no idea what's inside like of those. Like dunes? Well, I assume that there's something sinister going on in there, like like murders or nuclear something mm -hmm. or alien something. <sighs> I mean, regardless of what's in those bunkers, I I don't think Jill's ready to own a pet. Well, Okay? I don't want to keep buying her these. Bunkers. But how else do you learn? How else? Well, you can't just... Is it, it, it's unconscionable to keep giving her guinea pigs, all right? That's a lot of, I'm starting to feel like we're responsible. Now. Maybe it's where we're getting the guinea pigs. Maybe these are weak pigs. I think they're just average, normal guinea pigs. I just go to the pet store and I say, I mean, he's- they're, he's that, 
stop right there, the pet store. I think we should go to a guinea pig farm area. Fun. We don't need to go to a guinea pig farm, all right? We have three pet stores in this, like, but six that, block they, radius. They breed them and they put them in conditions where they get weird illnesses and then you feel bad because they die. What is a purebred guinea pig? I don't, I, like, I don't think we can... All right. Just roam around. Hey, you're free now. You're safe. Just take this off. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, 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 All right. All right. You're all right. All right. You got three to five years out here. Free. You can just roam around wherever you want to. Go ahead and go for it. You two look like you need a pig. Oh, we're just looking, so. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if I understand how these guinea pigs are any different than the ones I would get in a store. Well, these ones are free range, okay? So we got metal tubs filled with sawdust, but they're eight to ten feet wide. Okay. Wow, God. Oh, God. She's drinking Avion every day. Wow. I give her baby carrots. Wait, how much is this guinea pig going to cost? Because I feel like it, they're about $20 at yeah, the store. This guy, she's going to set you about, about uh, 700 800 Okay, right. we're done, hon. But look, she's, she's worth it. Look at how shiny her coat is. All right. Uh, maybe you have some advice because our, our daughter is having a really hard time with guinea pigs. Uh, she keeps... Just touch her fur. Oh, okay, it's a real, it's very soft. It's a very soft. Sir, I'm gonna tell you the problem is not with the child. The problem is with the pig. That's what I was trying to tell him. When what world? How uh, like I'm still having trouble seeing. Like this is a very loving guinea pig. It has nice fur. Smell that cow. Oh. Right? It's like roses. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to do this at your fine farm, <laughs> but honey, why are you sticking up for everyone but your daughter? I'm just saying I'm not going to pay $700 for another dead guinea pig. No, but you're acting like our daughter is a guinea pig murderer Th and that everything is her fault. And that is a terrible message to send to Our daughter is a guinea pig murderer, all right? <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> our daughter is a guinea pig murderer. Why would you I'm not so sure that these are accidents. But for, for three, I can understand. Five, I am starting to look at the way we parent. Well, they seem to have died because of natural causes. They do seem, but she is a smart girl. That is a smart girl. I'm gonna let you guys have this conversation. Me and Bubbles are gonna be over here in the barn. I Seems wanna, like private situation. Pet the guinea pigs. No, I want you guys to. I, uh, I think we. I think you should stay for oh. this. We need a witness. We need a I witness. guess. I, I'm just gonna record for a little bit. Just can you say? <sighs> looks like your daughter's a guinea pig murderer. Why would I say? Why that? would? Why would you? Why are you trying to get rid of our child? I'm not trying to get rid of our child. That, this to, is step one. This is step one to your daughter going okay. into juvie or something. Well, maybe this is about us. Yeah. All right. And don't you think about leaving. I <laughs> knew you were going to leave. Do not uh, go. Hey, Glossy. Do not go. Hey, Glossy Coat. I just... She has a name, and it's Bubbles. It is Bubbles. I love her so much. Oh, can you say that one more time? I love her so much. <laughs> Yay. Thank you guys so much. Um, come back out. Come back out. Step step into the light. And uh, with the time that we have left here on the derailer program, I just want to. Uh, we have about four minutes. What have we learned today? Uh, we learned that um, some people, <laughs> possibly only me, uh, use the media to heal their their terrible family traumas. <laughs> I learned that if you don't like people, you can pretend to be dead. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Don't That's, answer their tasks and then I'm gonna store that in a pocket. Yeah. Yep. I learned that everyone would take advantage of the opportunity to watch somebody else having sex through a window. Yeah. If given the chance. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I don't trust the person that uh, that turns away from that opportunity. Turns down a voyeuristic opportunity. Yeah. I learned that you can tell a lot about uh, your community from being at the dog park and observing things. Mm -hmm. yeah. I learned that. Uh, <laughs> I learned that Eric uh, definitely takes 
uh, documented media seriously and emotionally, <laughs> which I I also feel similarly with. Like taking like those moments that are documented are really important touchstones, uh, and I I I I value that as well. Yeah, I, we don't have time to get into it, do we? <laughs> Just the uh, next time, next time. On, next time on Derailer, Yay. my father asked me to record his father's uh, outgoing voicemail message because it was the only thing he had left. Yeah, and I uh, that was the year two thousand. But yeah, oh man. And now I can't erase any of my dad's voicemails. I get it. Well, on that pleasant and uplifting note. Nope, well, we got two more minutes. <laughs> I've all of my father's voicemails because they're insane. Yeah. <laughs> He's a doomsday prepper. And he always has little gems for me, so I have the opposite mm. voicemails. Oh my god. Would he, how would he feel about them being broadcast? I, I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> All right, well, now I know how to spend the next two minutes of derailing. Oh. Tell, um, oh, I don't know if I have any. Well, I guess Steve. Yeah, Steve. Should I grab my phone, Steve? <laughs> he doesn't watch television. <laughs> yeah, play one for the, for the because family. Because everyone else is going to be watching this in the whole country, you guys. Well, I don't know. Rick Moore is a <laughs> bit of a rascal. We'll see what we got. I might have a good one. Oh, God. But should I hold it up to a thing? No, this is delightful. You can just play it for uh, Janet and Amanda and Dylan, and I'll a, get a copy. That would just be a whole show of bringing people in to play the last message that their parents left for them. Mm, see, now we're now we're digging down into good stuff. <laughs> yeah, Garrett's dad is Monday night. Uh, Danny called no, me. Uh, it's one o'clock. I found out uh, for a break uh, party on Saturday. They're afraid the rain might fall, so they're going to be out in the mom's house. Everything's cool. Uh, I'll see you there if you're going to be there. Talk to you later. I need to go. I'm not sure. Anyway, talk, hopefully, talk to you later. Okay. Hopefully. That wasn't a good one. Good one above it. Yeah, we got I haven't listened to that one. We got another mm-hmm. minute. Oh, okay. It will be. Here, turn around and play it for the camera. The people at home. This camera? Yeah. Oh, it's not. Yeah, Garrett, Dad. Garrett, Dad, your favorite town on the Oregon coast. Uh, just going through. Get back up a little bit. It's really dark. And, uh, <laughs> thank you. Perfect. You missed it totally. I'm sorry. Right. Anyway, your favorite town. Just going through. Your favorite town. Bye-bye. Yeah, Garrett, Dad. Just entering your favorite town on the Oregon coast. Uh, just going through by the Dublin House Motel and uh, what is this next? Sweet Home. Give you a complete rundown of Yaha. Anyway, your favorite chef. Just going through it. Talk to you later. Bye bye. That uh, sounds crazy. It's insane. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. I don't have any that are under four minutes, so I don't <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're always beat, Mike. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. Thank you. Finally, I feel something!